Okay, here we go. Who's the boss? You owe me. Who is the boss? You. Are you proud of me? You're not going to be stuck working more hours. Do you need a coat today? No, I'll be all right, man. I had been doing quite a bit of community education pieces and um, public speaking with one of our individuals, Brandon. And when I would drop Brandon off and pick Brandon up, whether it be a weekday, a weeknight, a weekend, um, there were no variables in that house. There were three other fellas that lived there, um, except for this fella named James, um, who was always home. It didn't matter what time, it didn't matter what day of the week, he was always there. And so finally I said to Brandon, why is James always home? And he said, oh, Denise, he doesn't have any family. And I said, he doesn't have any family? Well, what does he do on Christmas? What does he do on Easter? And he says, oh, staff makes him dinner. You know, and they celebrate and they open presents. And that really bothered me. It happened right before Thanksgiving. I thought I'd love to have him over. Um, my family is like, open arms, please bring them. And um, I had to reach out to the office of the state guardian because James is the ward of the state. And they said, sure. And one day I approached him and said, James, I was wondering if you would like to join me and my family at our house for Thanksgiving. And his eyes got real big and he looked at me and he said, you mean I get to go home for Thanksgiving? And it occurred to me that home to James was a destination. It was some place for the last 40 years his housemates and those around him have gone. They're going home. They're going home for the weekend. They're going home for the holiday. They're going home to see their parents or they're going home for a celebration. And James never got to go to that destination. He came over and he enjoyed himself and before long, we seemed to be doing this for holidays, and then it seemed to be um, he would book me out sometimes six weeks in advance to where my name was in his calendar six weeks in a row, um, and we always agreed to the time 2.30. I don't know why, but I always ask him, what time works for you, and he'll say 2.30. So it's always 2.30. And he comes over, and um, we've been doing that for the last five years now, every week. Um, unless we happen to be out of town, um, he's joining in on whatever it is we're doing. Denise is my family. I'm a keeping her. And she took me to movies sometime. Maybe she, she took me out to eat. I help her the groceries and I help her cut the grass. I always take my dog out. I always take my dog outside and then take her for a walk because I'm her family. I'm gonna keep my family. That's his dog. Uh, he'll tell you that straight up. Uh, he'll take her for walks and take her outside to, to you know, go to the bathroom and whatnot. And uh, sometimes she walks him. I can remember a couple of instances where he went out and it was like, he was gone for quite a while. And uh, we started wondering. And uh, he came back, of course, uh, and he said, Sophie wanted to go all the way around the block. <laughs> And I said, well, you know, you have to tell her what to do. He goes, that's not very easy. <laughs> so, um, but he really loves Sophie. Ed, I like him too. He's my family. And I'm going to keep Ed, I'm going to keep Carlene, and I'm going to keep Patrick. I like to ask him about how work's going. He likes to tell me about how work's going, uh, the hours he's putting in. It's always saying that he's working like a duck. So uh, he enjoys, you know, telling me about his job and stuff like that. Time has gone on, you know, more holidays have passed, more time with the family together. He's just kind of become part of it. You know, when I go over to, to their house now, I expect to see James there. He's really built a relationship with each and every one of us. I just feel like I've become a better person being able to be part of James's life. I mean, it's, it's rewarding to me knowing that. It's rewarding to James. And James is always, you know, willing to talk. He's always happy. He is appreciative of anything that he gets. Uh, you know, he's never got an, an ill word for people. Uh, he's always willing to step out. Uh, and as a community, we could all learn from that. James has been from one institution to another, and he's used to institutional living. He's been with Spark 
about 25 years. And the group home setting for him has been wonderful. It allows him the amount of freedom that he needs, and that need changes um, depending on where he's at in his life. I don't know that James would be able to hold down a job or be able to have um, the nice home that he has without, without the support of Spark. Spark receives some amount of money from the state of Illinois through Department of Human Services to provide supports and services. Unfortunately, just based upon the needs of the state and, and how, how things operate, that, that amount is usually not sufficient to help our individuals achieve all the things that they want to achieve. So we do rely on donors and, and fundraisers to help bridge that gap and to help make sure that we're able to do all the things that James wants and that James needs. There is some risk, but I think it's a risk worth taking. I think, you know, I wish I could do it for everybody. I wish everybody had somebody in their life to make them feel like they were super special. I think all of us have that one person in our life, maybe two, and maybe we we're fortunate to have, a, you know, a whole group of people who think we're super special, someone who thinks we hung the moon. And I think that helps James move forward when he knows he's, he has somebody who's gonna make a big deal out of whatever accomplishment he's you know, working at or has tried to, you know, has achieved um, or is working toward achieving. To be you know, respected, to be accepted, to be made to feel special. And while I do that for James in particular, Spark tries to do that for all the individuals we support. And I would imagine, you know, maybe other agencies try to do that, but I don't think that they meet the demand. I'm 61. I'll be 62 next year. How long do you plan on keeping me? A long time. How long? Forever.